Hello. Um, we're going to cover the basic movement here in Bolt of a character controller. Yeah, I'll just go ahead and show off all the things that are working, and then afterward I'll go a little bit into detail about each one of the things. So, first we have our movement script, um, which is you know, pretty basic. It's just taking a move speed variable, timesing it by the um, by the axis uh, on the horizontal axis, and left and right, easy peasy, and then setting the velocity there for the. I guess I should do all the other things. We've got shift for running, um, and we've got a little bit of a a little bit of a. Um, gradual increase of speed till it gets to the maximum speed there. Um, we've got jumping, which just, yeah, is on the, uh, is bound to the, for, for the, I think for this thing it's the jump button. The sprint is set to fire three, so on the keyboard it's shift. We also have double jumping, which I can do once, twice, and then I can hit the spacebar any number of times afterward, and it won't let me double jump again until I hit the ground. And the double jump is set up so that no matter what speed I'm falling at or what speed I'm already going up at, it will reset the velocity to zero so that it doesn't cancel the jump out just because I'm already falling. <clears throat> and then we also have um, crouching, um, which I have disabled sprint while crouching. So while I'm crouching, I can only go the speed that I'm that I that I walk at, which is this one right here, and uh, we also, I guess, pretty obviously have turning uh, without uh, causing a problem with the camera. And the last thing that we have, and this is totally not part of the assignment, but whatever, we have wall jumping, so I can jump up against a wall and then jump off again. I'm a little confused because I thought I disabled the uh, hitbox on my nose, but I guess I didn't save it. Oh, you know what I didn't do? I didn't pull from my git yet, but that doesn't matter. I don't think I've got anything improved since last time. So um, so we we showed off the movement here. This is shift to run, and what it's doing is taking an increment value and adding it to the move speed while I'm holding down the shift key, and it will do that up until it's the same or, uh, yeah, until it's the same as the maximum speed, at which point it will just be the maximum speed. And it is disabled if the crouching uh, variable is false. So if I crouch, it will say that it's true and doesn't work. Um, let's see, what else do we need to do here? We, I do have a thing that resets the move speed if you're not moving or if shift is released. Another way to say that is that I can't be sprinting along and then turn around and suddenly have the same force that I had when I was going. That resets my shift uh, increment when I turn. Or if I stop, even if I continue to hold down shift, it will reset the move speed until I get to that point. Um, here's my crouch. And the crouch is a little bit complicated because... I don't like having it bound to a single key. I want it to be bound to down. So the, the vertical axis is taking control. And it has to check first if it's greater than, or if it's less than zero, then it will crouch. And if I let go, it has to be greater than negative one, which is to say the moment I let go of the key it will pop me right back up. So I don't have a little delay between that. And that's how, that's how they normally are with a bound key, but I can, use a controller if I want to with this with this crouch, which I like. Um, this is my reverse. It's pretty simple. It'll just it'll just force a rotation based on whether or not the uh, X vector is one way or the other, negative or positive. It's pretty pretty clear. And probably you know we could change this to not be an update, but that's no big deal. Um, the camera follow is set up to take the position of the player's uh, X and Y values and then add a little bit to the Y value so the camera is just a little bit above the player. And we could change this to whatever. But the problem is if it's too high, then when you're jumping, you mostly just see dead space and you don't really see what's below you. So I think one is a pretty decent balance. 
maybe 1.5 would be okay too. Two is also good. But that's why that's there. And then it will just set the position of the camera uh, to that vector three that we create there. Um, we also have uh, the double jump is integrated at the very bottom of the wall jump here. And all that's taking place is if it's grounded, um, then it sets the double jump variable to true. And uh, at that point I can do a jump. And if I'm uh, doing a double jump, it'll set the Boolean to false and then it won't let you do another double jump. This is the wall jump script and it's pretty complicated. There's probably a better way to do it. But essentially what's going on here is a ray cast is coming out on either direction of this per of the, the player character and it has to know what direction is going on in order to generate extra velocity for you to go the, uh, the opposite direction and because you can't set it to, you can't know for sure if it's going to be negative or positive based on which side you're on there's really two scripts here that are identical that go either direction um, they also will uh, take take away control of your X and, and you, yeah your X controller because if it didn't then you could press this jump button and it would let you just jump straight up the wall it has to push you off of it and you lose a little bit of control for that but it is it is fairly effective um, if I go over to the to the oh I, I didn't fix this yet that's what that's the one thing that's changed you can you can bounce back and forth off the wall if you want to that way like that and it will bounce me back and forth uh, and apparently I can just hang off the edge with my little nose so that's good so that's that's that um, we also have um, some kill boxes set up like this and any of these invisible boxes that are below the pits there's just one long one that goes below all the pitted areas they will reset you to your start position, which is automatically set when you start um, to where your, your where your character starts. So that's the first start position. So if I was to drop off right here, well, not right there because my nose is blocking me. Oh, actually, I don't even have that set up yet, so that's good. <laughs> um, but it would reset me. And then there's also one more thing that's already set up here, which is the checkpoint. And the checkpoint will uh, read this invisible square. I'm kind of sad to see that I didn't uh, that I didn't put all this stuff in yet. But it will read an invisible square and then reset the respawn point based on this uh, this trigger entering um, of the player, and then we'll change the start position to that instead, so that I have a little a little uh, respawn point later on around here somewhere but anyways that's all the basic movement stuff that i've got set up so far i should probably should have pulled from my get before i showed you this because there are pits and respawn points set up and that sort of thing but anyways i hope that fulfills the assignment um yeah see you see you around